Live with the community, this is the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform Development Bi-Weekly Call. It is April 13th. My name is David Warner with Microsoft, and I will be your host today. Let's take a look at the agenda. We're going to have a number of community updates across all of our projects, samples, all of the opportunities for you to contribute, and then, of course, we're going to get to picture time. And, of course, what are we all here for? The amazing demos. Marcus is going to show off a SharePoint document generator as Microsoft 365 app as Microsoft Teams native app. That sounds like inception to me. We're going to see some amazing stuff. And then Kanya is going to cover build a training request solution with Power Platform. Excited for that. It's his first one, everybody. So make sure we give him a warm welcome. And then, of course, who do we got? We've got all of our horse fans ready for who is our warrior horse manager. So Chris Kent is back to show us amazing stuff. Let's talk about how you can get plugged in and take advantage of the resources of the community. We have got Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community videos. We've got a LinkedIn group for discussions. There are a number of open source projects spanning Power Platform, PowerShell, PNPJS, all the great things that are going to help you utilize the technology that you love. And then, of course, all of our sample galleries, Teams, SPFX, extensions and web parts, Power Platform samples, list formatting independent publisher connectors, so many tools for you to take advantage of, so don't hesitate. Now, you see a lot of links on the screen. Don't need to remember all of them. Nope, not at all. Just got to remember one thing. That's ak.ms slash community slash home. That will give you access to all these amazing resources you're going to learn more about today. Of course, you're on a community call. That means you love community calls, and we've got more for you to take advantage of. The Microsoft 365 Power Platform is a weekly series with only Microsoft speakers that occurs on Tuesday. We'll see a little bit more about that in a moment. And then we've got a number of other community calls for you to take advantage of. Power Platform, that monthly call is next week. It's going to be live from MVP Summit, so we're excited for that. And then, of course, we've got the Microsoft Identity Platform, Office add-ins, and the two sibling shows, Microsoft 365 and Power Platform Community, which you're on now, and the Viva Connections SharePoint Framework. You can get access to all of these community calls and add them to your calendar, which you should at ak.ms slash community slash calls. Definitely do that today. Now you may wonder, how can I present on these calls? Because I see some people doing amazing stuff. I want to show the amazing stuff and you got amazing stuff. We want to see the amazing stuff. Did I say stuff enough? I don't know. I need to say some more stuff. So definitely fill out this form, ak.ms slash community slash request slash demo. It is your community call. We want you to be empowered to show off the amazing things that you're doing. It can be a demo, a technical pattern, a solution, a tip, a trick, something that you've learned to make your life better in the ecosystem of Microsoft. And we welcome you to do that. So Definitely don't hesitate to fill that in. We will reach out to you and get you scheduled. Now let's talk about that Microsoft speakers call. It occurs every Tuesday. The next is on the 18th of April at 8 a.m. Pacific time. We're going to see a trio of amazing demos on the topics of building a Microsoft Teams call queue scheduler solution for customers, introduction to Microsoft Teams Toolkit V5, some new features and capabilities. And then we're going to see another Microsoft Graph Hackathon winner demo number three that we're going to take advantage of and really excited for that. That's been a really wonderful thing. So definitely get that uh, call invite on your calendar and you can do that with that ak.ms slash community slash ms dash speakers dash call dash invite. Okay, now let's talk about how you can get assistance help uh, some assistance in working with the community. Sharing is Caring is a program that we have started that provides hands-on guidance. Now, what does that mean? It means that we're going to provide you together in a call, hands-on guidance on how to accomplish any number of things. We've got a number of topic sessions that we have built programs and sessions for. They're safe space. You do not need to worry about them being recorded because they are not. So it's a great opportunity to ask any and all questions. And we're really looking to scale this, by the way, everybody, trying to get it in a place where we can have these scheduled at all times. Uh, but we're looking for those who might want to help out, who might want to help proctor. So if you're a volunteer, maybe an MVP that's looking for some more credit or wanting to get more involved in community contributions, please reach out to myself and Hugo. We are looking for some that are willing to help out, uh, providing us opportunity to scale these sessions to ensure that everybody has an opportunity to learn more about how they can contribute. And once you have contributed, we want to recognize you for all the amazing work that you're doing, and that is how we're doing it with the recognition program. This is a program that's powered by Credly, that same Credly that offers you those badges when you get certified. We have them too, uh, and they're easy to get. You just need to contribute to the community in a variety of ways, and not all of them are code-based. They could be blogging. They could be speaking like our amazing speakers today. We do need you to opt in and register, ak.ms slash community slash recognition, and we'll track all the work that you're doing across all the GitHub repositories to make sure that you're rewarded for all of that. All right, now let's jump into some project specific updates and we're going to start with Bert. 
Thank you, David. Um, let's first start with uh, celebrating uh, some releases. Like uh, the Friday before the previous meeting, we uh, finally released uh, version 1.9 of Chorus Decay. <laughs> nice audio effects. Really suitable, great. <laughs> so 1.9 from PNP Chorus Decay um, with uh, several uh, larger and smaller updates. Uh, the main updates are actually on the admin side. Uh, uh, around handling uh, API requests, uh, discovering add-ins and ACS principles, uh, and so on. Uh, now, course decay is getting kind of feature complete, so we don't see major big new things there. But if you still have questions, things to if you want to get added, uh, let us know, and we can uh, discuss them and then take them forward. Let's move to the next uh, new release. Uh, that's the PNP framework one. Uh, so we always release them. Uh, Together and the uh, framework is at 1.12, uh, mainly uh, smaller improvements and fixes uh, for the most part in the provisioning engine because that's what folks are still using a lot. All right, moving on to the next one. And that's uh, kind of our overview. Now, um, to, be, to be honest, I've been on a pretty long Easter break, so I didn't do much there. So uh, if folks did great PRs, have issues pending, so. Uh, I will process the, those uh, over the coming weeks uh, for the next uh, meeting. So besides the release, nothing that much really happened. Uh, but one thing to call out is our usage. I think we in March got like a new all time high on the number of requests. So 44.4 billion requests done using .NET libraries so by 150 thousand plus tenants so that's a lot so um, yeah I think usage is growing and um, more features are coming then let's move to Gautam for the PowerShell updates thank you all thanks thanks Bert so yep close on the heels of uh, release of PNP framework and PNP core SDK we also released the PNP PowerShell P2.1.1 why 2.1.1 because it was Friday and we kind of made a small mistake so yeah uh, anyway Friday's deployment so long story short uh, 2.1.1 is out uh, what we did with this release is we dropped support for powershell 5.1 and powershell ise so we would encourage folks to use the powershell 7.2 or later versions um yep uh, besides that we have also been slightly busy with updating the set pnp commandlet so we have added support for loop and onedrive configuration parameters as well as the new slightly newly released functionality related to request files as well so all of them are available Available with the latest nightly builds. Uh, we also improved the invoke PNP graph method so that you can use that to, you know, download a file or download uh, output or get the stream. Uh, Get the file content as a stream as well. And then there was a slightly minor regression with the grant PNP Azure AD app site permission. So we, we used that command to set permission, the selected sites permission. And then there was a minor regression. So we fixed that. And all of that is out with the latest nightly builds. Um, we also hit a new all time high usage record with 40,000 tenants using it and 44 billion requests coming in this just this one month. So, yeah, that's pretty much from our end. Um, over to you, David. Awesome. Thank you, Gautam. Let's go to Yo Teams with Steven. Thank you, David. Uh, I hope this time my microphone is working as last time I was kind of in, in a mute hell. Yep. Um, yep. Same, same as Bert, uh, we have been on a uh, longer Easter break, so nothing much new happened. Um, we're still on version 4.1.0, but uh, what we're currently looking at is to improve our docs. Um, so we really want to work out uh, tutorials and usage guidelines for folks out there um, to give them an idea and uh, yeah, some help and usage uh, guideline on how to use your teams and what to do with it. Um, and also we want to um, emphasize on the contribution part of it. So if you are willing to help us let, uh, grow and extend your teams, we would definitely um, be happy to have you uh, as a contributor um, and welcome you, um, yeah, contributing and, and uh, improving your teams. So if you have anything in mind you want to improve, just file a, an issue or uh, send us a message on GitHub um, and we definitely uh, like to hear from you. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Stephen. All right, let's move on to Microsoft Teams Toolkit. Uh, so this week, not so much is going on as far as availability, but next week is our 5.0 RC. 
Uh, so looking forward to that. Some some things to call out for there if you haven't been following along is um, you it now has support for dev tunnels. So you have an, another alternative um, that is supported by us to uh, debug bots. Uh, and then we also have better validation to help you catch problems before you publish to Teams. So you can get all the stuff that Teams would normally do, but you can get it in your dev tools. So you can catch um, all sorts of stuff that prevent errors there. Um, there's autocomplete uh, now and suggestions just to give a little quality of life for doing our 5.0 stuff. And we have samples that support code spaces. There's some improvements to SPFX, and it's all in the change log. So you can take a look if you're uh, working with those tools. Um, and we have some new actions for running scripts is so you can make it a little easier for controlling things. And uh, I'm hoping to demo that. I was supposed to do that last or this week, but I got sick. So looking to demo that next week on the platform call. And of course, plenty of bug fixes. So that's what I got for you. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, John. Excellent. Hope that gets better for you. All right, let's talk about MGT. And I think we got Gavin on the call today. So we have just shipped our V2.10.0 as our latest stable release. Uh, a few accessibility fixes, a couple of new f minor features, uh, one in direct for a direct ask from a customer um, needing to control some font sizes on a very specific place, which was awesome. Um, they've already used that to roll out a proof of concept for another customer. So it's really cool to see that out in action. Um, we've got V3 Preview 1 out now. Please try it. Give us feedback. We have an open uh, a known issues issue open. So if you find things in there, please let us know if something just doesn't feel right. The only way we get better is if you tell us we're doing things wrong. Um, uh, we're really excited about this V3 release. Uh, we hope to have it shipped in the next month or so. Yeah, we've got our samples repository growing. We've even got our first community contribution in terms of a, an end-to-end -end component in review at the moment. So Graph Toolkit keeps rolling. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Gavin, for the update. Great to have you on the call. Let's move over to Joss on Independent Publisher Connectors. Hello, everyone. Um, we, as always, have updates in the world of independent publisher connectors, and I actually just want to share that the listed connectors here are indeed some of our newest deployments, but super late last night, that 981 number actually switched over to 993 total connectors across Power Apps, Power Automate, and Azure Logic Apps. So I would not be surprised if by the next time you guys see me in two weeks, we would have crossed over into that 1000 threshold. I am super duper excited excited. We have in, in status and Scraping B as two new independent publisher connectors, as well as some additional ones from first party Microsoft and Verify Publishers, Microsoft Search, Resco Reports, and SmartCom DocGen. If you cannot get enough of connector content, please scan that QR code and the link will be in the chat to participate in my Connector Labs call, where we talk about connectors and other power platform products as well. The key parts of this call, which will be next Wednesday, uh, it will actually be right before the Power Platform Community Call with David again. We will be demoing a WhatsApp connector made by a university student in London, as well as learning more about Dataverse business events. I hope to see you all there. Links will be in the chat. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. Thank you, Joss. Let's move over to Script Samples with Paul Bullock. Hello. Um, so Script Samples is a repository where you can share your PowerShell scripts or Bash scripts with the community. So we now have 184 scenarios, 240 scripts. So these are scenarios that are made of potentially one or multiple scripts, just to be clear on that. Um, so the tool sets that we, we support is, is pretty much unlimited, but the, it's focused around Microsoft Graph, PMP PowerShell, SPM Management Shell, CLI for Microsoft 365, and many, many more. And these samples do get uh, integrated into the uh, Microsoft Solution Sample Gallery as well for that sort of increased exposure. And we've had um, a new set of contributions, some wonderful contributions. So we've got some PMP PowerShell scenarios. So for example, SharePoint life, uh, list item version history retrieval by Michelle Rozumski. Uh, we've got download SPKGs, uh, so there's the uh, uh, SharePoint framework uh, packages uh, from the app catalog by Matteo Serpi. Um, get content usage within a site collection by Reshmi Aklu. Apply SharePoint JSON view formatting by Ganesh Snap. Uh, we've got getting get getting those checked out files in the tenant using search by Casper Larson. Uh, another sample from Ganesh Snap for emptying your, your SharePoint online recycle bin. 
Um, we've got some updated scenarios. So there's two here um, because there was um, uh, some and some enhancements made to existing scripts uh, for both CLI and PMP PowerShell by Veleras Nibutas for resetting your file permissions uh, back to the inherited state, uh, which is super, super cool. So thank you very much for those contributions. You're absolutely awesome. Um, we've got guidance on the site and uh, to get started if you wish to contribute. And also you can reach me on uh, uh, multiple, multiple forms, so LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, uh, to contact me if you need any support. And remember, um, you know, your contributions do get recognized as part of the recognition program. So claim your badge, but this is opt-in, so make sure you sign up for that. Thank you, everybody. Back awesome. You, Thanks, Paul. You are awesome. Thank you. Uh, Bob Germain on Microsoft Team Samples. Hey, thanks so much. So a um, couple quick announcements before I talk about the sample of the day, which is that we do, if you are in ISV, building software for sale and you want to monetize that software uh, by putting it in the Teams app store. Oh, it has to be a Teams app, but that's a great way to get more people using your app. Um, we There's a form in the upper URL in the upper right of the slide showing how you can get free support from the Teams ecosystem team if you are monetizing your app. Also, there's some great videos to check out on the bottom there uh, on Teams Outlook and Microsoft 365 development. But the main point is another amazing, amazing demo sample by the one and only Marcus Moeller, who's going to be showing another one of his great uh, samples in a few minutes. Uh, this one allows you to upload files and convert them to PDF in SharePoint. It uses the Microsoft Graph for conversion. But what's so amazing about it to me is that it's our very uh, it, well, I don't know, it's, it's probably the second one, but both are from Marcus. Um, it's written in C-sharp with Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio 2022. So this is something that not everybody knows about, that there is now an awesome way to build apps for .NET developers. And so um, ch please check out this sample. The URL is on the screen, and please go ahead and use the Teams Toolkit. There's a, this is a great way to get started. So thanks so much, and back to you, David. Awesome. Nice job, Marcus. And thank you, Bob, for the update. Now let's move to Power Platform samples with April Dunham. Thanks, David. So we don't have any other new samples to highlight uh, this week, but we do have some of the backlog that we're going to go in and process there. So we have in the future, but we would love to see your Power Platform samples, anything from Power Apps, Canvas Apps, model-driven apps, components, connectors, of course, uh, custom functions, Power Automate flow templates, uh, Power BI, virtual agents, and all that. We'd love to see your samples. You can go to aka.ms forward slash Power Platform dash samples to get those added, and we will highlight them next time on the call. Back to you, David. Awesome. Thank you. Excellent work. All right. Optional picture time, everybody. So let's get those cameras turned on. Vesta will take over the screen and we can wave to the community. Yep, absolutely. And let me get the picture in here. Good, good. Now it's pixel precise. We have 50 seats in a room. Bob, you're trying to show something which is hiding you. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's trying to you're trying to be too clever few more seats free on the room few more seats free few more few more i can see a cat on the table as well that's always good they are like that it's a large cat by the way uh let me actually put the camera on as well and let's do the the capturing three two one and we'll do a capturing out of this so thank you everybody for joining Good to have you on a call once again. Hopefully, we'll see you in the in-person conferences, which I have a lot of happening this spring as well. <laughs> I can see the cat jumping around. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> awesome stuff. Good to have you on a call. Really, really cool. All right. Let's get back to our regularly scheduled program. We're going to kick off our amazing presenters. We're going to start with Marcus, and it's going to be about a SharePoint document generator as Microsoft 365 app with Microsoft Teams native app. Marcus, take it over. Okay, yeah, today I want to show you um, SharePoint Document Generator. This is the second time because last week I was already presenting a similar app in the SharePoint Framework version, but today we are talking about a real Teams application, um, but it's still usable across various MAM365 products. And we have some additional capabilities, of course, today. Quick intro about me. My name is Markus Möller. I'm a Microsoft 365 developer expert for Avanade in Germany. I'm a Microsoft MVP since 2021, and you can reach me on Twitter or via my blog. And 
quick retro uh, and also an introduction into the different scenarios for those uh, Microsoft 365 across apps. We can render the same app or slightly different on various products, but it's only hosted once. And uh, we can do this, for instance, with a personal app. And last week, I showed you how to do this with SPFX. And today, I want to show you how to do this with a Teams native app. I called it this way because it could be either a Yo Teams app or a Teams Toolkit app. And additionally, what I can show you today and I, there I will concentrate on is that we also have the capability of search-based messaging extensions to enrich our Compose box in either Teams or Outlook. And this is where I will introduce to the document generation review process. So let's kick the demo off. And only very quick, I will show you uh, something similar than last week. Last week, I was presenting you the SPFX Office Generator. Today, I show you this one in Teams. It's slightly different because here I'm using the out-of-the-box available Fluent UI React North Star controls instead of the normal Fluent UI controls last week. And then I quickly enter some dates here. Come on. We'll also enter a price. Same like here. You can also manipulate it that way. We have a VAT and we have a description. We don't make it too long today because we want to quickly rush through here. Kick this off. Document is generated. A link is there. I can already also directly jump over and show you that guy here. It's our PNP4 demo, um, not yet visible in Word, but we can see our metadata here. We can also quickly open it here. Outlook Web Access does not show the metadata, and I'm skipping today open it in Word. Um, there you, in Word desktop app, you would directly see the metadata included as well. We can render the same app in Microsoft Outlook. There we have an app button. We have our offer creation, your Teams version. And here we have the same app. And I skip to add another document, but I will quickly show you the third option. This is in Microsoft 365. There we also have apps. And we also have our personal apps here, the SPFX version from last week and the offer creation, your Teams from this week. And this is the document generator. Now let's jump, and therefore we can close this. Um, now let's jump to the second capability, the search-based messaging extensions. So when we have installed the app and also added the app to a specific team, we have a search-based messaging extension here. Or in fact, they are there are even two. We have the review and the publish one. Let's start with the review thing. And let's maybe pick a document from last week. We can pick it and we have it here as an adaptive card. It's jumping over a bit. And this is already, no, this was the review doc. Sorry, I picked the wrong one. Let's simply do it again. Come on. Now let's take that one from today. We have to send the message first. Then we could this in a reviewed state. And with universal action model of adaptive cards, it's directly updating and showing up the review date. We can also quickly check uh, the metadata here. There we have also our review date, which was just entered um, during this process. The same works in Outlook. In Outlook, we jump back to our mails, and here we can create this uh, in a new mail. So we have in our Compose box, we click Apps, we find our Your Teams generator, and now I show you also, maybe you haven't seen this uh, so often. I was also not aware of that this is possible uh, till I checked it out here. We have the possibility to even have two search-based or more search-based messaging extensions. So we can switch here from the review one to the publisher one. 
And for this process, I directly classified my documents as reviewed. And this is currently in public preview, so I have to send it, unfortunately, to myself because I'm the only developer preview user. Send the message to myself. Should occur in my inbox here. Then I can click on publish. This takes a bit longer because publish is not only a metadata modification, uh, normally, this should work in a way that it's uh, updating the file also as a PDF. Wondering what gets wrong here. At least we have a submit date here. We have an offering submitter. And what might get wrong here, what I also try to do is no. That's also fine. So I wonder, wonder where the error message comes, but this is also what I wanted to achieve, that I not only uh, set the document to publish in terms of metadata, I also want to have a final PDF document. And here you can also see the metadata inside. Um, I'm using a simple Office uh, document template here. Of course, this can be done much prettier than I did. These were the capabilities to show you today. And here are the additional ones in terms of adaptive card and publishing, which is not possible that way with SharePoint Framework, so I couldn't show it last week. But now let's flip and uh, quickly introduce you how this gets realized. The first thing, once again, is uh, the SSO part um, for the tab application. Um, I already showed this slide uh, a while ago, but I want to stress this once again. When you achieve SSO in a Teams tab, please, please do everything you can in the backend, so server side. So the only thing what you should do client side is um, get a bootstrap token, which is only the identity token, and then shift it to the server together with the information what you want to do, and finally, only retrieve the final result. And this is what I'm doing in my tab application, so like generating the doc here. So once again, do not do anything else client side. What I'm additionally doing here, I'm using behind the scenes because I'm coming from the SharePoint framework uh, sample as well. I'm using behind the scenes, uh, most of the things I'm using SharePoint REST API. And it's, simp uh, it's, it's quite easy, uh, also available that you use Teams tab SSO with the SharePoint REST API instead of Microsoft Graph. And what I'm doing here is I'm simply retrieving the site domain from my context, and then I'm constructing from the site domain the scope. So I do not have a graph, uh, Microsoft.com slash default or something like that. I have a uh, yeah, Marcus Möller SharePoint.com or sites right, something like that. Scope, and then I directly get a token which I can use against the SharePoint REST API. The second part is um, the, the, the SSO for the bot, which is, uh, lies under the messaging extension. Um, and here I want to quickly introduce you what happens um, for the sign-in. The sign-in is handled with the bot together. Therefore, you need to establish a graph connection, which you see on the right side. In your bot, there you have your client secret, your client ID, and your token exchange URL, which is the, the endpoint URI, and also the tenant ID is necessary. And here I use a graph scope for this, by the way. And this is a, a connection which you establish in your bot configuration. And in code, you try to receive a token response. And if you do not have one, then you send back a simple window, which looks like this that the user has to sign in and consent this app. And this happens most, most of the time, this happens only the first on first usage. What's important to achieve those Teams applications and then extend them as Microsoft 365 apps, I uh, cannot uh, stress this enough, is we need to have a Teams manifest version 1.13 or above. And then in the first part here, we have our simple static personal tab called Offer Creation. This is the document generator I showed in the beginning. And additionally, we have our Compose extension, which is here in terms is a search-based messaging extension, which is on the one hand the Offer Review part, and on the right, it's the Offer Publish part. And those are search-based messaging extensions. It's, um, yeah, you can notice this by the type, which is query here. 
Last not least, as I showed two demos now uh, today and last week, and to compare this a bit, some general considerations on this, why we would this or that one, um, especially um, for the front end part. Of course, SharePoint framework is simplified in terms of in terms of hosting, but it's client side runtime only. So you do not have a backend. And it's also simplified in terms of authentication. But it can be a problem because the authentication is more or less owned by Microsoft because you have to use a service principle which comes from Microsoft. And not every tenant administrator or not every company, especially zero trust scenarios, this is a problem, uh, do not allow this at all. They have Azure AD policies which prevent this sometimes. And then you need to switch to a backend version where you have your own application uh, registration in use and there the Teams apps are much better uh, and much com more comfortable. Yeah? But when you use this backend to switch back to the hosting, of course you need to take care for hosting. You need to establish an Azure app service, uh, something like this. You need to take much more care for deployment processes and so on. And these are considerations that I would take into concern when deciding which way to go when developing those kinds of apps. Last not least, my resources. It was a longer series, but mentioned here two blog posts out of my series on that app. Um, the GitHub sample in the PMP repository also available since a while already, and the general Microsoft documentation as always on Microsoft 365 apps, as, starting with the overview. And that was from my side. Thank you. <laughs> Awesome, Marcus. Very well done. I know this is a, a fast demo, but really hit it home. So thank you very, very much. All right, let's move into our next presenter. Pio Wayne Kosi is going to show us how he built a training request solution with Power Platform, and it is his first demo, everyone, on this call. So let's give him a warm welcome. Take it on over, my man. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure being here to join you guys. Let me just share my slides. So how about me? My name is Piwango Kanya Lulu. I'm an IT student at DET, which is the Deppen University of Technology in Deppen, uh, KwaZulu Natal, South Africa. Um, my Power Apps developer um, currently have three Power Apps certifications to my name the PL900, the PL100, and the PL400. I'm a low code enthusiast uh, since last year, I uh, made uh, getting introduced to Power Apps platform. I loved it from the get go. So last year, we had a bootcamp uh, uh, on campus uh, we where I got introduced to Power Apps and we were required to solve different uh, problems using Power Apps. So uh, my problem, uh, the one I had was I had to automate a approval flow for training requests in a company. So the problems that were faced with this company, uh, employees had to fill, uh, had to manually fill in the form for forms could get lost. The up approval process could take ages because the approvers will sometimes even forget to approve those requests. And lastly, uh, lack of statistics, because the data was just in papers and all that, uh, it was hard to get an overview of how many training requests were made in the company. So going forward, uh, these are just some of the part of the business requirements that I was required to fill. Uh, an electronic capture of training requests by employees, team leaders, when it needs to use form uh, approval of training requests by department manager and learning and development managers, confirmation of training uh, bookings, attachment of booking details and feedback to the requester, and lastly, uh, statistics of training requests. So my solution, uh, part of my solution, I had a Canvas app, Power Automate flow for the approval flow, and lastly, a Power BI dashboard, of all, which I will demonstrate to you guys in a minute. So, my Power Canvas, uh, my Canvas app uh, consists of a form that allows users to save uh, those forms as draft and come back later on and submit them for approval. It allows users the ability to attach supporting documents for their uh, training requests, and it allows uh, users to capture requests for individuals and groups. So this is just a sample of the Power Automate flow or what it had to do, right? including notifying the requester, in this case the user, uh, on the status of their request. And also the Power BI dashboard, uh, I had to show statistics 
and uh, namely the number of training requests submitted versus completed, the cost versus uh, the cost or value of training requests submitted versus completed, and the number of people trained per month and year. So it's time for the demo. Uh, I'll just switch uh, to my app. Uh, let me just go back. So this is my uh, Canvas app. Uh, it has some sort of dashboard at the bottom where you can see if you have any drafts, uh, rejected requests, approved requests, and submitted uh, requests. You can see all this data in real time. It's linked to a database table where everything starts. So I'll make a simple request. I'll enter my training provider. I'll say PL200. I'll enter that date. And an end date. Oh, so if I enter an end date that is uh, less than the start date, it will give me an error saying that the end date should be greater than the start date. But if I enter uh, an end date that is greater than the start date, uh, it will no longer give me that error and everything will proceed as normal. So here I have to enter the training cost. I'll say 5,000. Booking type in this scenario, I'll make an individual booking. Um, right now, I could choose to upload a file or not to upload a file, but let me just upload a file. So, this is my document I've submitted. Benefits acquire something which is beneficial, like. So, here I have a choice. I could choose to say this is a draft or I turn the toggle on, I could submit the request. Uh, in this instance, I want to submit the request for approval. After I've submitted my request, I now see that the number of requests submitted has increased, which means I have four. And I go into my request side and I can see the currently submitted request here, which is actually pending, which is zoom out a bit, which is uh, currently pending, as you can see with data. And I can go into details to view all the details, and I still have my document here. So what should happen now? Let's just give it a second. An email should come through uh, on the department manager's side. Let me just reload. Uh, say reload. As you can see, I have my document right here, and I also have the request here. So this is basically an adaptive card in Outlook. So the manager over here uh, on this adaptive card can view the details of the training request, download the request, the training request file. One second. Okay, download the training request file if they want to, then they could either approve or reject the request. So as you can see, I can read out all the details I entered, the, the amount, uh, the course I want to study and the training provider and the start and end date, and the type of booking that I'm making. So if the uh, department manager rejects without uh, adding any comment, it will bring back a response telling them that it should add in comments. As you can see, please add comments in order for them to be able to reject this request. But in this scenario, I want to approve the request, so I'll add a comment. I wait for you to uh, submit. Now my response has been submitted. Then I have I can go to the learning and development manager as per uh, the initial approval flow that the company had before. So let me just wait for this to load. As you can see, it just came through. And the learning and development manager can also see the same details. So uh, in order for this request to be approved, both the uh, department manager and the learning and development manager have to approve this request. So in this in instance, I'm going to approve, but also if I try to reject without adding any comments, it will give me the same error. As you can see, but if I approve, I uh, don't need to add comments, I can just submit. Let me just close this. And once that, that is done, as uh, the requester, I can check uh, my emails real quick. Right. As, I can, as you can see, uh, I get a notification for every step that was taken. 
as you can see, these are the training request details. This is a comment that was made by the department manager. Uh, the learning development manager didn't make any comments, hence it is uh, blank. This is, so it also tells me that my training request for the PL200 has been successfully submitted. This uh, notification comes through after submitting the training requests. So after that, if you go back to my app, and I just change it, uh, go to approved. Give it a second. You can see that my training request was approved and I can read through that it was approved. And yeah, so from here, as part of the request, uh, there has to be a Power BI dashboard where you can view the statistics of training requests in the company. It's an interactive dashboard, meaning if I click, uh, uh, let's say approved, uh, give, give it a second, the data will load and change and show only uh, training requests that have been approved. I click on submitted, which is request that just have been submitted without any approval process or without it being rejected. I can also see the same thing. And over here on my filters, I can adjust the, uh, the date as I want. And it changes the data accordingly. As you can see, the charts have changed accordingly. And I can clear all the uh, slide, uh, the data. And I can also uh, filter using the department. In this case, since I only have one department in my uh, example, which is just the IT department, I click on it. But if I click on the black department, it's going to reload and shows me data like this, which is, not, which is uh, inconclusive. So that was my app. But I'll also just demo one feature, the saving as a drop feature. So going back to my app, I could save this. Drop. Save. Enter the start date. Start date. The training cost. Looking tab. And it just into the benefits. Which this time instead of to, uh, turning the toggle on to submit, just save it as draft. And once I've saved, I can see I now have a draft. I go back to my request. I, cl I click on my draft tab, give it a second to load. Uh, let's go back to my, I can see my, uh, my draft request here and I can modify it as I see fit. Change a couple of things, maybe instead of PL, it will be 600. And I can save the changes. Now I can see it is, uh, my changes have been updated. Uh, and also, I could submit. If I want to submit uh, this request for approval, I just have to toggle this and click on update request. It tells me my request has been submitted. And then that will kick, on, that will kick in. Uh, the power automatic flow again in the background. Uh, thank you for your time, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that's what I had to showcase to you guys today. All right, Pua Kosi, thank you so much. Really great job. Welcome to the call. Thank you for sharing that with us. Excellent work. Uh, I'm sure that those in the chat would like to ask some questions, so we'll let them do that and have an opportunity later. Uh, for lack of time, we'll move it over to the one and only... <laughs> Horse Whisperer, Chris Kent, take the stage. Yo, what up? All right, let me share this here screen. You guys let me know when you see it. You got it. Oh, yeah. All right, everybody. I'm Chris. Woo. All right, let's take a look at some exciting list formatting uh, things and stuff. Perfect. Okay, so we head over to our classic uh, uh, Warrior Horses site, and we're definitely not beating a dead horse with this joke. Oh, my gosh, that's hilarious. All right, moving on. All right, uh, what do we got? So, the, uh, the horses, as we know, they do uh, war is business and business is war. And uh, as a part of that, you know, they manage uh, what they do in the battlefield here in Office 65, as we all do, right? So if we head over to our targets list, this is a, a list where they're trying to determine, you know, what are the most strategic targets to, uh, to attack uh, in the upcoming uh, quarter? All right, so they've got a list for that. And what they've done is they've decided to kind of score these on uh, six different kind of principles. Um, that make these things more or less attractive uh, to be a target. And so we've got all those numbers. I made them giant just so we could see them. And that's exciting. Uh, 
Just so you're aware, under the hood, I named all of these uh, score one, score two, score three, score four, score five, score six. six. Um, just to make things easier when I'm writing the format here in a moment. But what would make this easier to read, right? Now, we've only got, uh, what, five items here, but if we had a whole bunch, this gets really hard to determine any kind of value out of this, right? Especially if the uh, scores aren't all even, like I've got them right here for our testing purposes. So what I wanted to show is how we slap a radar column on here. Oh, just kidding, there is no radar column. Oh, no, I just kidding, it's all a ruse. We're gonna make one ourselves. So what I thought would be interesting is if we take a look at what is the process to make a format uh, that's considered a little more advanced so we would do a dynamic SVG, right? So an SVG is a scalable vector graphics. It's something that is fully supported in list formatting. And by fully supported, I mean, uh, it's got the bare bones in there and it's good enough for what we're gonna do today. Uh, but what I wanna do is kind of clear it up because sometimes people look at the end result and think that's way too complicated for them to have ever done. So I just wanted to go through uh, an example of how I might create one uh, using some tools. Uh, and we'll slap it all together. So uh, let's do it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I like to start with my SVGs. You can always download SVGs from a variety of sites. Uh, but for this one, I'm just gonna draw it in a free tool called Inkscape. So this is an open source tool here. And then if you're not aware, SVGs are just XML uh, documents right here uh, like this. So I've gone ahead and just saved this blank SVG over here so we can see what is being output. Okay. So let's take a look here. So if we want to create a radar chart where I want to plot all six of those uh, scores, uh, I need to create a polygon. So we'll create a polygon. I've got my six corners already selected here, and I'm just going to drag one of these out. That sounds, ooh, let's create it as, as horizontal as possible. I'm just going to use the, uh, the bottom there to, that is so beautiful. Perfect. Okay. So now I'm just going to take this giant thing I just made, uh, right? And we're going to go over here and we're going to, uh, I forgot to tell you, I've already done it, but very important for this is we go into your preferences and we're gonna make sure we go to our input output and we want our SVG output and we wanna make our pass string format absolute. Uh, that'll make more sense here in a little bit, but just keep that in mind before I forget to tell you that. There you go. All right, so now we've got a exciting, uh, I don't know what you call it, a stop sign type shape, yeah, hexagon, that's the one. All right, so we've got one of those and we wanna put this kind of in the middle uh, so what we can do is we can come to our align and distribute menu right there. Uh, we're just going to hit relative to the page and boom, boom, boom. We'll put her in the middle. So right, let's make this a little bigger. We don't need to see that. It's the XML right now. I'm going to copy this thing because I want a few more of these. All right, so I'm going to copy. I'm going to paste it. It goes there. I'm going to center that one too. Boom, boom. All right, and then I'm going to scale that one. You notice I don't have any fill and I've just got the stroke. That's kind of the default in here. Um, if yours is not the default, you'll just want to pick that. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to transform. So I go to my object and I go to transform so I can get this and I can scale it. And for this, we're just going to, and again, this part is less important, but I think it's good to see. Uh, let's scale that proportionally. All right. And apply that. So now we've got a smaller one and let's paste another one on there. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, scale this one to 50%. All right. So we'll apply that and let's uh, align that one as well. Boom and boom. Woo. And then we come back over here and let's do one more just for fun. All right. And we'll put this one at 25%, right? You could vary this. This is just for uh, what we're trying to do. Let's go back over here and let's center that one as well. So, wow, wow, wow. Okay, so we've got this. That's great. Um, and if we were to save this, let's go ahead and save that and let's get that back to that side view where we can really uh, see what's happening here. Uh, now we can see we've got these complicated paths that got added, one for each of those shapes. They've got these transforms in them, all this extra junk we don't care about, and they're all grouped here. Uh, and I mentioned earlier that while we've got SVG support, it's a bit bare bones. And so one of the things we want to make sure is we're always using paths. So if you end up using an object, like we add labels to our chart, which we're not going to do for time here, uh, you'd want to convert those uh, into a path and so on. Uh, but then the other thing is we don't we don't have any support for transforms. So we want to get rid of those and get rid of these groupings. So let's do it. So the easiest way to do that is I'm going to select everything and I have an extension, which I'll link to at the end here, which you can install in here, modify path, apply transform. And all that's going to do is going to go through those paths and ignore that. And that's an exciting error. Um, and it's going to remove those transforms. So when I save this right now, you just see we just simplified that uh, dramatically. These are now drawn absolutely. So these are the points we want to draw our shape in. Woo, and don't worry if that uh, doesn't make any sense. We're just going to cut and paste those things. So yay. All right, so now we've got that there. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is remove this grouping. So we can do that by editing the XML structure. Um, so we expand that group, whoop, 
We're just going to make this uh, window a little bigger. There we go. All right, and we're just going to move each of those out. Get out of there. What are you doing? That's just silly. All right, there we go. Get rid of that, and we'll kill that guy. And if we save that, now we see, boom, now we've got rid of that group. That's great. And the last thing we want to do is make sure that this thing is centered correctly. So we're going to go document properties. And we're going to say resize the content. All right, that's going to make that whole document that way. That's going to make our view box uh, the way we want. And we're going to save that. Now, if we wanted to go a little simpler here, right, we can go up here, we can just save as. And we're going to choose instead of an Inkscape, we're going to choose a uh, not optimized because that's going to get rid of our absolute paths. So we're going to plane, we're going to hit save. And yeah, replace that sucker. Boom. All right, so now we've got an even simpler SVG, right, that describes this. Okay, so now we can get rid of Inkscape. Bye. We don't need you right now. Uh, what we're going to do is we want to use this. Now, this is not a JSON format. So how am I supposed to make it work magically? All right, well, good news. We have an exciting tool over here. Uh, if we head over to aka.ms slash list hyphen formatting, uh, we end up at this beautiful site. And at the very bottom here, we've got this tools link. If you click that, we have this kind of hidden tool, HTML to formatter. This allows you to paste HTML or CSS and both and output that as JSON. Now, you you can't always just take it directly, right? But it gets you a lot of the way there, which is awesome. So if I grab this guy, right, let's copy that sucker. Boom, and paste it over here in the HTML. And then we're going to hit run. All right, and that's going to generate, it's basically going to map all of these things into the uh, special syntax we need. We're going to hit copy on that. And let's head back over here. So now, well, let's just go ahead and apply it to this column for funsies. All right, advanced mode. And let's make that a little bigger. All right, let's paste that in and preview that. Ooh, we got an SVG that's starting to show up. All right, so now we're getting somewhere. Now, there's some extra stuff here we don't want. We're just going to get rid of, like, for instance, we don't want debug mode. That always gets added with the uh, the tool. And I don't want any of these styles that got added to the individual paths. I'm going to get rid of all those. Bye-bye. See ya. And this is why we didn't really care about the stroke color or the stroke width, because we were just going to take them away. And if we preview that, now what have I done? Right? Don't worry. Uh, what we've basically done is we've taken a default fill. And so let's get rid of that. So let's add a style to our SVG, right? So it's a style. Oh, let's be careful where we hit our tabs. Hit enter, all right? And we're going to hit uh, fill. In this case, we just want a transparent, right? And then we want a stroke color, right? And unsurprisingly, we call that stroke. All right, and we're going to call this. So if we just said red, right? We can see there we have a red stroke. That's exciting. But we could go even better. Or if we say this magic phrase of current color with a capital C, a lowercase c and a capital C, then we can pick up whatever we have as the font color, right? So that means that we can use cool things like attributes. Oh gosh, we cancel there. And we're gonna hit enter and we're gonna type in class and we're gonna do something fancy like MS font color neutral primary, right? So that way we're using a theme color and we do that because we're using current color, it gets picked up, boom, 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 that's exciting. You know, we can change the size of this thing, right? So we can say uh, width on this is, we're just gonna make it huge so we can see it, 400 pixels, and we're gonna say our height is also 400 pixels. Ooh, got extra colons everywhere, colon city. All right, <laughs> that means, now, Ed, that made the uh, the whole box bigger, but it didn't actually change the scaling, right? And that's where we're going to want to use something called the view box. So we add it to our attributes here, view box. And for this value, this is what's going to do some magic scaling for us. So if we just head back over here, all right, we just grab it right out of there. We just need that view box exactly as Inkscape made it for us. Boom. And we'll put it in there, view box, and we'll preview that. Now it scales appropriately, and let's just scroll that over. Man, I made that huge, didn't I? That's cool. All right, so now we've got this. Wow, we drew an SVG, and if that's all you wanted to do, mission accomplished, right? Uh, but if we want to make this thing dynamic, which we definitely do, that's what we're going to look at now, all right? So the idea is these values should map, right, on here. Um, and to make that a little easier, now this one's only got these few lines, so this is fairly okay to, to see. One thing I like to do, though, especially when working in any kind of format that gets complicated or lots of children um, is I like to add comments. Now your first, you might look at that and go, a comment, oh my goodness, how is that possible? Well, the, the way it's possible is any property that doesn't actually use is just ignored. So you can add anything, you can call it whatever you want. I called it comment, I just make it obvious what I'm doing, but you don't have to call it comment, you can call it uh, Toby's special notes. <laughs> I mean, even if your name's not Toby, that's totally a possibility for you. All right, so we'll say ring three, ring two, ring one, and we'll say the inner ring, ring is zero, right? So that's where we want our values. These are values from zero to three, 
And so that's how we want to plot those. So that makes that a lot easier to kind of figure out where we are in things. Again, just to prove it doesn't change anything, doesn't break a thing. Now let's add our dynamic one. All right, here we go. Oh man, I'm almost out of time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this very, very quickly and then we're uh, gonna move on from there. So the idea is if I were to paste this, right? And I call this uh, scores, we'll move on. I can make this into an expression. I just put an equals and then I start building this as a string. So really I'm just going to be building this by string concatenation. And then I can do a series of if statements and copy each one of these individual coordinates down. Now, again, I'm out of time, so I am just gonna jump ahead and grab one that I already did. Uh, instead of making you watch me cut and paste everything. Paste, and let's preview that. Okay, so what we did was that thing is we wrote a series of if statements, and what you didn't really get to see is if you use the uh, the control F here, you could help yourself by highlighting things, right? So everywhere you need to see something, right, is greater than or equal to three. Uh, you can use that, and that can be really, really helpful in sorting through what gets to be a lot of text on the screen. Okay. So there we go, now we have this, and it previews that. So now we have this exciting thing here, and let's save. Now, one of the things I didn't mention is that these formats actually randomize when you click on them. That's a, so I can randomize the values here, so you can, just so you can see the uh, uh, that it is drawing it dynamically, All right? So that's pretty cool. So the idea is we took it from Inkscape, we ran it through our HTML to formatter to, to make that easier as a format, and then we customized it by just doing simple string manipulation. And uh, one other thing I'll mention here, we don't have time for it, but I will show you that this could be done the exact same type of thing in Power Apps. So I have a component here and you can see I've just got the SVG and I'm doing with switch statements here, uh, but we're doing the exact same thing. And that allows us to have a component that's dynamic, right? It has its own properties here. Right? So we can say, this is a one instead, and it'll redraw here in Power Apps as well. So you can see same principles all over the place. It's very exciting. All right, let's wrap it up with some slides. All right. Prepare an SVG, use that absolute path, make sure you use Vuebox, only path, so all the other fancy stuff like text or circles, all that needs to be converted to paths before you import it into the list formatting. Uh, again, using a tool like Inkscape that's pretty straightforward and use that fancy current color. And there is the tool I use, those are the tools, very exciting. Feel free to add those comments, any extra properties are ignored. So it doesn't have to just be comments. So if you're just trying to track like, hey, this is that, even if it's just while you're doing the, uh, the development of the format, I find that extremely helpful. Um, because uh, if I look at it a week later, I won't remember what that is either. All right, so finally, here is the links. Uh, so this is the link to Inkscape if you wanna download it. Again, it's free, it's open source. Here's an extension. You literally just download two files and put them in your, uh, your app data folder. And there you go. That's it for me, woo! Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Always entertaining. A jam-packed shortened session, but we appreciate it. Uh, giving us everything from... Yep. Chris <laughs> and I will be the, uh, the Daft Punk at uh, the upcoming conferences, so you can look forward to that. Thank you, everybody, for your uh, contributions. Chris took us through Colon City, which is the capital, by the way. Did bum All right. Done with the jokes. Marcus. Pywinkowski and da -da -da, Chris Kent, thank you for your demos today. Excellent job. Now, you may all want to continue the conversations with them. We have that opportunity for you. We have our community call conversations feature. These are dedicated forum threads for each of these demos. You can interact and collaborate with our presenters and others who might be interested in what they presented. You can use the QR codes, you can use the URLs, we will put them in the chat, absolutely go and engage with them, even just letting them know that you appreciated the hard work that they gave today. We also wanna know if you are liking these calls. So give us your feedback, rate the call content, provide us with what you're liking, what we can improve on. We absolutely wanna hear more from you and ensure that these calls are something that you're all enjoying uh, and are set up to be something that you want to attend every single week. Thank you. The recording will be available in 24 hours on the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform Community YouTube channel. You can absolutely subscribe at ak.ms slash community slash videos. Do not try to download it from the chat thread in Teams. It will just end in sadness unless you are a Microsoft employee. So definitely go subscribe and you'll be alerted as soon as the newest video drops. Follow us on Twitter at m365pnp as well as updates on LinkedIn, ak.ms slash community slash li the next m365 power platform bi-weekly call april 27th two weeks from today same bad time same bad channel and of course the sibling viva connection sharepoint framework april 20th at 7 a.m pacific time as well you can always access them all get them added to your calendar ak.ms slash community slash calls thank you everybody for being the best part of our day and keep up the great work we look forward to seeing you have a great day